I want a proper apology. You go up there and you apologize. Sorry, Fabrina. Hi, I'm Jesse. I'm I'm John. Nice to meet you. Here, if you just take this, go get changed. Callie. Hi. I'm Al. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. I am quality control auditor. I pay for the gas, yes, sir. Okay. You know, sometimes we may go 200 miles away. We don't get paid for all the traveling. All right, you can't take any of your, like, Gucci stuff or stuff like that, Sheldon. You need, like, work boots, right? Number 11. Wild Wings Rick When the producers of Undercover Boss Canada first called Wild Wings CEO Rick Smiklas about appearing on the show, it was the absolute worst day in the company's history. Smiklas had just caught one of his trusted longtime employees stealing from the company, and Revenue Canada was combing through the head office performing a thorough audit. Smiklas thought he was on the brink of losing the company he had spent over a decade building, yet amazingly, he still agreed to appear on the show. Smiklas wound up going undercover as Angelo, a rough-around-the-edges guy from Chicago inspired by one of his real-life friends. He sported a bad wig, schlumpy jeans, and transformed his pearly white into a mangled yellow smile. He headed out to Wild Wings locations in Ottawa and Oshawa and did everything from wiping down tables to mixing drinks. The Wild Wings CEO took justice into his own hands by stepping up for Sabrina, a server who was mistreated by her store manager while appearing disguised as Angelo on Undercover Boss Canada. Like that stuff makes sense to me. Well, yeah, because that's all head office stuff. Much longer the guy that's running this store because he beats to his own drum. He's bigger than the brand. And when you're that big, there's the door, buddy. It was off. I'm going bankrupt tonight, you know that, right? You think I come here happy so all the that's time? that's my fault? I give you the five no. days, six days? I want a proper apology. You go up there and you apologize. Sorry, Fabrina. Uh, I love you, Ray. No, you, you, don't, you don't love me. Give me a break. This crazy promo of yours, what is that? After being paired with the server Sabrina, he learns that the store owner of a branch of Wild Wings was circumventing franchise rules by creating his own specials and selling unauthorized beers. In the testimonial, Smiklas points out how confusing the specials are and how there are corporate agreements in place for draft beer. Though frustrated, he continues with his undercover shift and finds out the hardship Sabrina is going through. She has just gone bankrupt, her car has broken down, and her hours were unstable. This is all going on while she's being tugged around and mistreated by her store owner and manager. She bursts out crying from the manager's office, and Smiklas immediately offers to put himself on the line and confront him. This is when things get heated. The store manager immediately recognized Rick Smiklas, who began his tirade on all the corporate and human-level offenses he's committed. It's all a bit too much for Sabrina to handle. She just found out the employee she was training is her CEO, she's lost her job, but also got a new one in a span of a few minutes. During the intimate one-on-one -on -one meeting, undercover boss Rick Smikolas makes good on his promise by tripling her salary, but also goes above and beyond by offering to buy her a new reliable car so she can get to work and continue to support her two daughters. Number 10. Subway's Dawn Don Furtman, chief development officer for Subway Restaurants, took the bold step of stepping out of the executive suite to blend in at one of the smaller outlets. Subway, one of the world's largest food franchises, houses a diverse workforce and caters to a wide range of customers, offering endless sandwich combinations. The undercover journey he embarked on was enlightening, not only in terms of understanding the daily grind of the operation, but also in unraveling the human aspect, the employee spirit that truly propels the brand. One of the most transformative experiences was his interaction with Jesse, one of the toughest no-nonsense employees who turned out to be an inadvertent mentor to him. Don was thrown into the deep end of the subway operations where Jesse ensured he learned every necessary detail. Don's approach, laden with humor and goofy antics, initially seemed to irk Jesse, but her sheer professionalism prevailed. Jessie, though taken aback by Don's unconventional demeanor, remained steadfast in her duty, maintaining a focus on teaching him the ropes. Despite having worked under several bosses, Don candidly admitted that Jessie was the one who inspired an element of trepidation, a remark made lightly, but one that underlines the respect he had for Jessie's work ethic, commitment, and prowess at her job. Hi, I'm Jesse. I'm John. Nice to meet you. Here, if you just take this, go get okay. trays. The test. Two trays, one tray. Two trays, four, three, three, double, one.
Don't read cheddar. Big Philly. Big Philly. Uh, three trays on a foot long. Okay. Like, what is a big Philly? And what else? And uh, a little more turkey. As good or better than me. I'm a customer. I just walked in the door. What do you say to me? Um, hi, how you doing? Funny guy. Hmm? You're trying to be a comedian. How about we just make sandwiches? How many pieces of turkey does a foot long turkey get? Uh, I would say six. You would be right. Oh, everything but onions and hits, so I can remember what order. Mm -hmm. Some pickles, sir. Yeah. Come on, just grab a handful. Yeah, you can pass. Oh, well, uh, look, there's a lot of people here. Roll, roll. Roll, roll. That's all right. Excuse me. Are you here to go? I'm having trouble here. here. It was my first club ever. Experiences such as this shed light on the immense benefits CEOs can reap from visiting their customers' smaller locations. Don's first-hand interaction with the ground operations was an invaluable eye-opener. It gave him an unfiltered perspective on how the strategies planned in boardrooms played out in the real world, providing insights into their effectiveness and areas of improvement. More importantly, his visit humanized the executive suite for the employees. It gave Don an opportunity to forge personal relationships with employees like Jesse. These interactions instill a sense of belonging, inspiring greater loyalty and a vibrant organizational culture. In understanding the challenges, aspirations, and realities of his employees, Don was better equipped to make empathetic, informed decisions. The story climaxed beautifully when Don, moved by Jessie's life story and her unwavering dedication to her job, offered to fund her college education. The surprise left Jessie speechless. The gesture wasn't just about monetary support. It was an affirmation of her hard work, a validation that it mattered and was recognized. To further this, Don gifted Jessie and her father a vacation, providing them much needed time for relaxation and bonding. So you, you're digging your bomb diggity sandwich over there? It's really delicious. I've quite gotten a corporate bigwig to let me bend his ear about that. It's on my list. I have a list. It's a big list. Yeah, it's back to headquarters. We have to look at the channels to make that happen. So do you live around here? I, it was a commercial carpet installation business. I've gone to jobs and... You know how to install carpets? <laughs> I'm like, I have an idea where she is, but she's yeah, it does. Jessie's been through a lot of stuff. Uh, I could relate to what she was talking about. In conclusion, Don's experience underscores the profound benefits of executives, particularly CEOs, visiting their smaller locations and outlets. It provides them a real-world reality check on their strategies and helps build stronger relationships with their employees. It also leads to better decision-making, positively impacts employee morale, and eventually bolsters the overall effectiveness of the business. The CEO in this case had the opportunity to acknowledge and reward the hard work of an employee in a meaningful and life-changing way. It is indeed a practice that more company leaders should consider adopting for the betterment of their organizations and the people who make them thrive. Number 9. Tailor-Made Golf Company's Mark This episode of Undercover Boss follows Mark King, CEO of TaylorMade Golf Company. TaylorMade is the number one maker of high-end golf equipment in the world. Mark King has been with the company for over 30 years and started as a sales rep. After Adidas bought the company, he was main CEO. He takes his job seriously, but thinks that work should be done by 5 p.m. His goal is to figure out how the company can be better to bring in more revenue. He's going undercover as Al Bauer, a golf enthusiast. His first stop is Westminster, South Carolina to work in quality control at a factory producing golf balls. To work in quality control at a factory producing golf balls. Al is working with Kaylee, a quality control auditor. She inspects over 5,000 golf balls in a single day. Callie. Hi. I'm Al. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. I am quality control auditor. Hey. All right, let's grab the clipboards and we'll hit the floor. Over 5,000 balls. I nick missing out of it or there's a line. Do you inspect every ball? We do 25 ball audit, bottom throw it. You go and then you hand it to me and I'll tell you good or bad. You're good? You have to have very clear vision. Yeah. And I was as slow as a turtle. Because we have so much to do. Okay. That way it goes a little faster. 
Yeah, you're right. Show you how we have to do it. Nah. Why not? I'll get it. Because we gotta go. <laughs> well, maybe I can be faster. Kaylee inspects the golf balls quickly, but Al is pretty slow because he has bad eyesight. They move on to stamp inspection, and he's just as slow on that task as well. Kaylee's been at her position for two years. All the supervisors work first shift, so she has no one to go to with problems or questions. Al tells Kaylee about his daughters and how close he is to them. Kaylee's father wasn't in her life. Her aunt and uncle took her in and cared for her. Now she's married and living in a mobile home until they save for a new house. Al is very proud of Kaylee and wants to keep her in the company. Al's next stop is Piedmont, South Carolina at a return center for footwear and apparel. He's working with Teresa, the return supervisor. Her department handles returns for the entire country. Al tries his hand at entering return numbers and scanning returns, but he's slow at it. Teresa's been with the company for 23 years and created the returns department. Al is shocked to find that return shoes are cut and tossed in the garbage. On break, Teresa and Al get to talk. She's taking a singles cruise to Alaska in July. Her mother was a foster parent and she's thinking about becoming one. He feels uneasy about lying about his past when she's pouring her heart out. He breaks cover and tells her who he really is. He tells her she's a spectacular employee. Al's third stop is in Liberty Township, Ohio to train as a demo technician. The demo tech invites golfers to test out equipment and adjust it to the customer's needs. Al's now working with Jared, a demo tech. He does four to five demos a week while attending college. He wants to be a professional golfer and he won a state tournament. During the demo, the tech watches the golfer hit a few balls and then make adjustments based on what they see. Jared is very knowledgeable about the clubs and adjustments. On a break, Jared tells Al that the techs only get paid for their time on the course and not on the gas or travel time. It's a nice ride. I appreciate it. I had a smaller compact car. I pay for the gas, yes sir. Okay. And I, sometimes we may go 200 miles away. We don't get paid for all the traveling. I'm paying for my practice, but I, I'm lucky to break even. Jared said that they get paid for the time on the job. What are you going to do to pursue this? tour thing. Uh, you know what? I, I need a sponsor. Right now, I can't do it. That's it's, it's, it's too much. Too much. If I had time and a sponsor, I could do it. I know I could. Jared can't work on his program because he's busy and doesn't have the money. If he could find a sponsor, he could work at it. He wants to eventually own his own course and bring the price of the game down. His fourth stop is in Carlsbad, California at the manufacturing plant, which also happens to be the headquarters of the company. He's working with Christian, a club assembler. He glues the head of the club to the shaft. The company announced overtime and Christian's happy. He never misses overtime and spends more time at the plant than at home. He had a soccer scholarship in college, but his mother got sick, so he dropped out to help. As he's working, the workers in the plant start to stare at Al. They come over from other departments to check him out. Finally, Someone comes and asks if he's Mark King, and he reveals himself. Most of the workers know he's the CEO, so he goes around saying hi and shaking hands. Mark eventually reveals himself to the employees he's worked with during his undercover time. He tells Kaylee he's impressed with her work ethic. There will be a supervisor on call when they need one. He gives her $3,000 to buy a dog that she wants. He also gives her $10,000 towards her new house. Number 8. Delphore Sheldon in an incredibly engaging episode of Undercover Boss US, viewers are given an intimate glimpse into the inner workings of Belfour, the world's largest disaster restoration company. Through the dedicated eyes of its CEO, Sheldon Yellen, we experience the daily rigors, the challenges, and the triumphs of the often unsung heroes within the organization. The episode chronicles Yellen's journey as he steps out of the comfort and familiarity of his executive suite to delve into the raw reality of his company. By going undercover, Yellen willingly undertakes a transformative experience that not only reveals the operational intricacies of his vast organization, but also deepens his understanding of the human spirit that fuels it. One of the most impactful scenes involves Yellen wrestling with the physically demanding task of hanging drywall. Despite the struggle and unfamiliarity, he doesn't retreat. Instead, he dives in head first, 
determined to understand and master the skills required. All right, you can't take any of your like Gucci stuff or stuff like that, Sheldon. You need like work boots, right? Then you'll see how many shoes he actually has. That's rugged, okay. Is that good? I'll take that, yeah. I want to go undercover, not returning back to our shops. Are some of our employees doing side jobs or not? All right, I will see you. Be Tom Kelly from Phoenix, Arizona. My employees will be told that this is a show where a man and a woman can. Great, how do you do this? It's been a long time since I've done anything that involved manual labor. This should be an interesting day. Is there... Come on in. Okay, thank you. I'm not sure what I'm gonna find here. Hopefully the damage isn't too severe. This dedicated immersion into the laborious process sheds light on his resilient character, his willingness to learn, and his respect for the hard work his employees put in daily. His arduous journey culminates in a truly captivating and emotional moment. In a grand gesture of authenticity, Yellen unexpectedly unveils his identity to an unsuspecting employee. This moment is powerful not for its surprise element, but for what it represents, a sincere demonstration of gratitude and recognition of the diligent labor of his workforce. This act is a testament to his understanding that every effort, every toil, and every success within the company has a human face behind it. The employees' reactions are raw and revealing. They're simultaneously stunned, relieved, and deeply grateful. To realize that their CEO not only appreciates their work, but also values it enough to personally experience its incredibly moving and inspiring. Hi, Joe. Hey. Hi, Tom Kelly. How hey, are Tom. you? All right. Okay. Look, here's a uniform. <laughs> okay. Hey, you're back. Hey, I'm back. What happened? Oh man, terrible thing. That. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take down the rest of the drywall, strip the entire walls all the way off. Let's start with loading out. Get this job going. You think you got a handle of that? Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa! What are you doing? You're killing me. What's that? Uh, just don't chuck it in there. I thought going into this that packing a box would be relatively easy and I'd have a hard time messing it up. Yeah. She let you in. Oh, that's the homework. Yeah. Oh, okay. yeah. Yeah, Mrs. Howell. Yes. How long have you been doing this? I've only been with these guys four months. Really? Yeah. Yeah. This recognition significantly boosts their morale and reinforces their commitment to the company. Yellen's unconventional yet enlightening journey serves as a powerful reminder of the importance of acknowledging individual contributions in an organization. His inspiring leadership, driven by empathy, respect, and dedication, redefines the role of a CEO. He's not merely a decision maker in a high-rise building, but an integral part of the team on the ground. Number 7. Mayor of Fontana In an immersive and compelling episode featuring a Quinta Featuring Aquanetta Warren, the mayor of Fontana, California, viewers are treated to an unconventional journey of governance. This episode encapsulates Mayor Warren's resolute mission to secure the city's future, particularly in the wake of a devastating pandemic that has severely disrupted the usual rhythm of life. Mayor Warren showcases an admirable resolve to delve deeper into her city's inner workings. Instead of relying solely on reports and briefings, she takes a hands-on approach, actively engaging in city maintenance tasks such as attending the city's sewer system and cleaning up litter-strewn parks. So I have a bucket here with a trash picker for you. So how often do you have to clean the park? We clean it every day. Breaking rules, leaving garbage Dropping everywhere. Trash. A lot of trash. What is that, cigarette stuff? and they have to clean up the park, get all this stuff out of the way so the children don't see it. This is total. Yep, that's pretty crazy. Are those panties? It sure is. Don't tell me, don't tell me. I was shocked to find some of the things we found. Oh my God, what is that? Is that what I think? My goodness. Nobody's gonna come to a park that is full of filth. There's not much we can do. Unless we had a park ranger, they had to let the person go. Candace made a great suggestion that we need a park ranger for after hours, so I'm gonna go back and check in. It is hot and rattlesnakes will appear sometimes. I am terrified of snakes. By assuming roles typically reserved for city employees, 
she opens up opportunities to view Fontana from a fresh perspective. The episode is interspersed with hilarious moments as well, providing comic relief amidst the serious undertakings. Providing comic relief within the serious undertakings. In one such instance, Mary Warren is taken aback by the surprising contents of litter in a park, which include a pair of dirty underwear and condoms. This unanticipated discovery serves as a stark reminder of the real-life challenges city maintenance workers grapple with every day. The daunting task that Mira Warren undertakes is a balancing act. On one hand, she must manage the complex demands of running a city from infrastructure to public health. On the other, she strives to empathize with the struggles and hardships faced by city employees who are key to keeping Fontana functional and clean. Through her unconventional approach, she hopes to bridge the gap between governance and execution, making herself a leader who truly walks the walk. Through her education and hard work, Mira Warren aims to secure the trust of her employees, demonstrating that she isn't just a figurehead, but a committed public servant ready to roll up her sleeves when necessary. She seeks to gain insights that can only be obtained by immersing herself in the city's day-to-day -day operations. Ultimately, Mayor Warren's goal extends beyond understanding how the city works. She's motivated by a steadfast commitment to improving the lives of Fontana's residents. By directly experiencing the city's operations, she hopes to uncover areas for improvement and create sustainable solutions to the city's challenges. Her hope is that these insights will help her make informed decisions that will ensure a prosperous and resilient future for Fontana. Number 6. Round Table Pizza's Paul In an enthralling episode of Undercover Boss, viewers are introduced to Paul D'Amico, the dynamic former president and CEO of Round Table Pizza, a revered West Coast pizza franchise. The crux of this episode is D'Amico's strategic quest to expand the company's footprint eastward and to evolve the brand to cater to a younger, more diverse clientele. His vehicle to achieve these ambitions? Going Undercover by trading in his executive title for an apron, D'Amico embarks on an immersive journey to truly understand the mechanics of his company. His challenge? To keep up with the fast-paced, high-stakes environment of a bustling pizza kitchen. This means tackling mountains of pizza orders, adhering to tight time constraints, and mastering the nuanced art of pizza making. While D'Amico is no stranger to the industry, the question is whether he can leverage a skill set to not only survive in the kitchen, but also uncover valuable insights from the experience. The stakes are high, but D'Amico isn't a first-time participant in the Undercover Boss series. Drawing on his previous stint on the show in 2013 as the president of Moe's Southwest Grill, D'Amico is well aware of the valuable insights that can be gained from such an experience. He had witnessed firsthand how the candid feedback and raw, unfiltered interactions with employees can shed light on possible improvements, and he aims to leverage these lessons at Round Table Pizza. With a memory of his fruitful undercover journey at No Southwest Grill, D'Amico dives into his new mission with optimism and determination. He looks forward to getting an up-close look at the operations interacting with employees in a candid environment and gauging the pulse of the business from the front line. He believes that such experiences will yield meaningful insights, helping him develop strategies to drive the company's eastward expansion. As the episode unfolds, viewers are left to wonder, will Domingo succeed in his undercover venture? Will he handle the heat of the kitchen and the pressures of frontline service? And most importantly, will he successfully tap into the collective wisdom of his employees to glean valuable insights? In essence, this captivating episode serves as a testament to the transformative power of empathetic leadership. It showcases the valuable learning that can be harvested when executives break away from their corporate bubbles to experience the realities of the front line. With D'Amico at the helm, it promises to be a journey of discovery, resilience, and strategy charting a bold new course for Round Table Pizza. Number 5. Moss Tex Jose In an insightful episode of the acclaimed reality series Undercover Boss titled Moss Tech, viewers are privy to an immersive journey undertaken by CEO Jose Moss. His mission? To garner a deeper understanding of the company he's tasked to lead. Moss doesn't remain ensconced within the confines of his office. Instead, 
he ventures into the heart of his organization, stepping into the shoes of the employees who form the bedrock of Moss Tech. Throughout his undercover assignment, Moss visits various company locations, interacting with employees in their work environment. With each site that he visits, he progressively unravels the real-world scenarios that his employees encounter on a daily basis. From understanding operational challenges to identifying areas of improvement, he keenly observes the nuances of Moss Tech's culture and the lives of his workforce. In a surprising revelation at one location, Moss discovers that employees have been doing all the repairs and maintenance on their equipment independently, a stark deviation from the company's outsourcing policy. This scenario underlines a disconnect between the organization's policies and its implementation at the ground level, a fact that had obviously escaped Moss's attention. Recognizing this discrepancy, Moss wastes no time in rectifying the situation. Alex? Yes, sir. Man. Nice to meet you. Alex, how are you? This is my brother Kelvin. Hey, hey Kelvin, how are you, man? Oh, it's a bad feature. Yeah, good luck with that one. Well, what are we doing here today? There's power rain to lift it and set it on the pad. Once we set it, we go to the step of all the connections. If I set the cable wrong, if somebody might go without knowing what they're doing and connect it, this will blow up. One mistake will do it. Cool. Eminem. 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 <laughs> yeah. This is pretty simple. This handle tells you exactly what this arm is going to do. Right? So far. All right. You're leaving me? I'll tell you what to do down there. All right. All right. <laughs> go, let's set the first round for And I winch up. <laughs> All right, Manny, bring it to me. That it turns like yeah, that? it's fine. Manny was too gentle. You have to be fast and productive and safe all at once. He initiates steps to ensure that repairs and maintenance are outsourced to qualified contractors in line with the company's policy. This immediate action isn't merely about policy adherence. It underscores a commitment to ensuring the safety of the employees helping them focus on their core responsibilities without the additional burden of equipment maintenance. This change brings a notable improvement in the working conditions, job satisfaction, and morale of the employees. By alleviating them from tasks outside of their purview, Moss ensures they can concentrate on what they're hired and skilled to do. This action also underscores the value Moss Tech places on its employees, which in turn fosters a stronger sense of loyalty and commitment to the company. In the final analysis, Jose Moss's undercover stint isn't just about uncovering operational inconsistencies or identifying areas of improvement. It's a profound exploration into the heart and soul of Moss Tech. The experience allows him to gain a more in-depth understanding of the company culture, the employees' lives, and the complexities they face. Equally importantly, it offers him the opportunity to initiate positive changes that would significantly enhance the overall functioning of the company and the well-being of its employees. And thus, the episode Moss Tech spotlights how CEOs can gain invaluable insights by directly engaging with their workforce. This journey reaffirms the power of understanding, adapting, and improving in real-time key attributes that make Jose Moss's leadership truly commendable. Number 4. Budget Blinds In a thought-provoking episode of Undercover Boss titled Budget Blinds, we are given a rare opportunity to witness an intriguing role reversal. Chad Halleck, the CEO and co-founder of Budget Blinds, swaps his corporate suit for work overalls, stepping into the shoes of his employees. Under the pseudonym Tom, an ex-artist, Halleck takes on the challenging roles of a blinds builder and hanger and embarks on an undercover journey to comprehend the inner workings of his organization better. As the episode unfolds, Halleck's assignment proves to be far more demanding than he had anticipated. As Tom, the erstwhile CEO, now blinds builder and hanger, he struggles to keep up with the speed and efficiency of the seasoned workers. The reality of his employees' daily grind, marked by precision, speed, and meticulous attention to detail, strikes Halleck profoundly. The tasks, seemingly simple from an outsider's perspective, reveal themselves to be complex and demanding, requiring a level of expertise that Halleck grapples to master. But the episode extends beyond just the physical tasks. An equally critical aspect of Halleck's journey is his conversation with the employees. As he works alongside them, he gains valuable insights into their lives, their challenges, their victories, and their perspectives on the company. 
These candid, heartfelt interactions shed light on how Budget Blind as a company could further enhance its support for its employees. Empowered by these revelations, Halleck, as the CEO, endeavors to channel the learnings from his undercover mission towards tangible improvements within Budget Blind. His first-hand experience of the work complexities, coupled with the understanding of his employees' personal and professional struggles, equip him with a unique perspective to navigate changes. The goal isn't just to make Budget Blind more operationally efficient, but also to create an environment that's more attuned to the needs and well-being of its employees. This episode highlights the significant lessons that can be gleaned when leaders step down from their pedestals to experience the realities of their frontline workers. As Halleck navigates his journey from the CEO's corner office to the workshop floor, he embodies the true spirit of an undercover boss, drawing invaluable insights that can drive his company towards becoming a more supportive, empathetic, and efficient workplace. Throughout his journey, Halleck reaffirms the belief that great leadership is built not just on making strategic decisions, but also on understanding and appreciating the perspectives of those who make the execution possible. Number 3. Retro Fitness is Eric In this intriguing episode titled Retro Fitness, Eric Casaburi, the CEO, undertakes an undercover mission within his own company. Casaburi's goal is to observe, understand, and if necessary, rectify the functional dynamics of his organization from the ground up. He aims to experience firsthand the challenges his employees face, their interactions with customers, and the overall ambience of his fitness centers. During his clandestine journey, Casaburi comes across a particularly challenging scenario, an employee harboring a deep-seated resentment towards customers. Outwardly, this individual comes across as unwelcoming and supportive, casting a negative shadow on the company's customer service reputation. For a business in the service industry, such behavior could be detrimental, deterring potential customers and affecting overall customer retention. Undeterred by the initial impression, Casaburi decides to delve deeper, seeking the root cause behind the employee's hostile demeanor. He discovers that this outward bitterness is the result of personal issues plaguing the employee, manifesting as an unfavorable attitude towards customers. This revelation unveils a crucial aspect of leadership. Understanding an employee's performance can often be influenced by factors beyond the workplace. Casaburi's response to this delicate situation is both compassionate and proactive. Through a genuine, heartfelt conversation, he manages to make the employee open up about his struggles, establishing an empathetic connection. Instead of reprimanding or disregarding the employee, Casaburi collaborates with him to devise strategies in order to better manage his personal issues and improve his customer interactions. The end of the episode brings a heartening turnaround. The once resentful employee undergoes a dramatic transformation, becoming more patient and understanding in his customer interactions. He learns to set aside his personal tribulations while serving customers, striving to provide an optimal customer ex striving to provide an optimal customer service experience. This episode of Undercover Boss is more than just a storyline for a reality show. It demonstrates the transformative power of understanding and compassion in the workplace. By taking the time to listen, empathize, and help an employee dealing with personal issues, Casabiri manages to turn a potentially damaging situation into a positive outcome for both the employee and the company. His actions not only succeed in changing the employee's perspective, but also significantly enhance the customer service experience, reinforcing the adage that the strength of a leader lies in their ability to empathize and effect positive change. Number 2. Modell Sporting Goods as Mitchell In this engrossing episode, Mitchell B. Modell, the CEO of Modell Sporting Goods, steps outside the boardroom and into the shoes of his employees. This episode encapsulates Modell's daring undercover journey across various store locations in the United States, revealing a unique ground-level perspective of his own company. The transformation into an ordinary employee allows him to immerse himself in a day-to-day -day operations, taking on routine tasks, confronting challenges, and interacting directly with the customers. With the guidance of the undercover boss team, Modell embarks on a voyage of discovery, peeling back the layers of his organization. 
he witnesses firsthand the work dynamic, gauges employee perception of company policies, and experiences customer interactions through the lens of his frontline staff. It's James here. I am James. James Joey, Clerk. Nice to meet you. I am the assistant manager of the store. <clears throat> Just a little, a little gruff. I mean, he was hard to understand at first. This is your main drive aisle of the store. This is what we do Ooh. is keep them folded. Lay it out. Give it a flip. Tuck and fold. Nope. Try and look for the old fold. There you go. There we go. Anything you want. Be creative. I'll be back. The guy fighting you back? <sighs> OK. You work in the front section of the store. Look up, greet the customers. His first-hand exploration helps him develop a profound understanding of his business's operational realities. Throughout his undercover mission, Modell encounters numerous revelations. The sheer dedication and hard work of his employees leave a deep impression on him. He appreciates their commitment to the brand and is moved by their relentless pursuit of service excellence. However, he also unearths inconsistencies between the company's strategic vision and its execution on the ground, with some policies not being well understood or implemented by the employees. Armed with these insights, Modell doesn't just stand as a passive observer, he initiates change. He sees this mission as an opportunity to refine company policies, improve employee training, and enhance the overall store experience for both employees and customers. From clearer communication of company strategies to the introduction of more efficient operational practices, he makes it his mission to address the shortcomings revealed during his undercover stint. Perhaps the most heartening aspect of Modell's undercover journey is his interaction with his employees. Recognizing their hard work, he expresses his gratitude personally, rewarding their dedication with well-deserved bonuses and promotions. These actions not only boost employee morale, but also creates a greater sense of loyalty and pride in the organization. After his undercover mission, Modell emerges with a holistic understanding of the ground realities faced by his employees, the strengths and shortcomings of his organization, and the areas that need immediate attention. He uses these learnings to implement changes that are beneficial for the employees and the overall health of the company. In essence, this episode of Undercover Boss illustrates the transformative power of good leadership. By stepping into the shoes of his employees, Modell exemplifies a leadership style that values understanding, adaptability, and a genuine concern for employee welfare, reinforcing the principle that great leaders are those who are in touch with the realities of their workforce. Number 1. Fast Signs International's Catherine As this episode is based on the company Fast Signs International, the audience is treated to an extraordinary expedition undertaken by Catherine Monson, the CEO and President of Fast Signs International. Choosing to swap her high-level position for a frontline role, Monson takes on the mantle of her everyday employees who form the lifeline of her business. Embarking on an undercover mission, Monson immerses herself in the daily tasks, triumphs, and trials of her grassroots staff. This hands-on venture uncovers a multitude of operational challenges, from evident communication barriers between management and staff to a glaring lack of training opportunities Monson is awakened to a myriad of issues that her employees grapple with on a daily basis. Moreover, this experience allows Monson to see the direct impact of her boardroom decisions on her employees' lives. This revelation serves as a wake-up call, highlighting a disconnect between her strategic decisions and their practical fallout. Monson realizes that although her decisions are geared towards advancing the company's growth, she may have inadvertently overlooked their personal and professional repercussions on her workforce. As she delves deeper into the day-to-day -day operations, Monson is deeply moved by the tales of employees who have shown unwavering loyalty to Fast Signs International over several years. Their dedication and commitment to the organization serve as a powerful reminder that employees are indeed the backbone of her company. Drawing from the insights of her undercover journey, Monson instigates tangible changes. 
She acknowledges the dedication of her employees with well-earned raises, addresses the training gap with enhanced learning opportunities, and overhauls the communication framework between management and staff. These transformations aren't simply reactionary steps, but strategic moves aimed at bettering her business's overall health and employee satisfaction. Well guys, that about does it for today's video, and we'll see you again next time.